Okay, we've talked about C3 and C4 and cam plants. And when we're talking about C4, C3, we're talking about the photosynthesis that we've already learned about, that you've taken a test already on. C4 plants, they're a little different from C3 uh, leaves. Let's take a look at this and exactly what the difference is. You'll see that the structures are the same, the tissues are the same. You have the vein in the middle of a, of a leaf. You have the this uh, these bundle sheath cells that kind of surround the the vein. The vein is non-photosynthetic. And here you have the mesophyll, right? The mesophyll is where you find the chloroplasts. The spongy tissue is where the gases are taken care of, there, where diffusion is going on. And you have the stoma that open and close depending on whether the guard cells swell up or, or shrink back that opens a pathway for the gases to be exchanged with the outside. So when you're looking at a C4 plant, the only real big difference, you know, one of the big differences between a C4 leaf and a C3 leaf is that these bundle sheath cells are involved in photosynthesis. Notice that they're colored in green. They, they interact with the mesophyll very, uh, very closely. So let's take a look uh, at, at diagram A here. And this would be the bundle sheath cell, that's this area here around the vein. And this would be, this is the mesophyll, as you see here, the, the, the area around the bundle sheath cells. So just to make, deep, to be clear, the reason that this occurs, C4 occurs, is because of areas where you get a lot of sunlight, very bright light, or uh, it's, it's getting, it's very hot, this this method allows the plant to absorb the carb, to open the stoma during the twilight hours. You know, the, the, the interesting thing about C4 is they can, they have, they have their stoma open during the later part of the afternoon and the early morning, as well as throughout the night if they wish. Uh, but they, during the day, they, they, the hottest parts of the day they can, and the most bright parts of the day, they can close the stoma and not allow the gas exchange to occur. Now remember the, the big point here is photorespiration. We're trying to stop the what we know and what you should already know is rubisco. We were trying to stop rubisco from from using oxygen instead of carbon dioxide, which would stop the stop photosynthesis in its tracks and wouldn't it wouldn't allow for sugar to be to be used to be made excuse me so the if if the rubisco takes in oxygen instead of co2 then the calvin cycle does not make sugar so that's no good so the key here is that if you the the c4 plants separate photosynthesis into two parts uh, the ca uh, or rather the carb the capturing of, C of CO2 into two parts, and they separate it uh, by take by area by where it's being done, half of it being done in the mesophyll, the other half being done in the bundle sheath cells. The light reactions still occur here in the mesophyll, so you still have the li light water being split into oxygen here. You still have uh, the electron being excited and moved down the electron transport chain here. You still have ATP and hydrogen ions being made there. You still have the electron being excited, NADPH being made, and, uh, and again, ATP being made in this area due to light coming in and in, in interacting with photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. All that's happening here. But then in the Calvin cycle, instead of just doing the Calvin cycle where uh, Rubisco takes the CO2 and, and makes sugar, this plant, this C4 plant, takes the CO2 in, um, usually in the twilight hours, uh, but any time that, that it's not too bright, not too hot, takes this, opens a stoma, CO2 comes in, gets captured by PEP carboxylase C, and it takes that, that uh, PEP carboxylase takes... Uh, the CO2 makes it into malate, and then that malate or malic acid then goes into the bundle sheath cell where it's, it's kind of kept there, it's stored there. You have a high concentration of malate. Now, the malate <clears throat> to, 
turns into CO2 almost immediately and then back into pyruvate and pyruvate comes back into the mesophyll cell and you have that cycle keeps going. What you leave in the bundle sheath cell is a high concentration of CO2. So you're leaving a lot of CO2 here for the Calvin cycle uh, to, uh, to make sugar so that what you're, the whole purpose of this structure is that Rubisco has a lot of CO2 to work with and very little oxygen to work with. And the key is that the reason you want to do that is, is Rubisco, if given a choice, would choose oxygen in high concentrations of oxygen, would choose oxygen rather than CO2, and you'd lose about anywhere from 25 to, to even more uh, uh, percentage of your sugar <clears throat> production capability. So the idea is that you, the plant wants to maximize the production of sugar and minimize photorespiration. Remember, photorespiration is where the, the rubisco chooses oxygen, hence, hence the word respiration, instead of, uh, car, uh, instead of carbon dioxide to do its, its, uh, its business. So that, that is C4, right, where we're separating the process by space. In C in camp plants, <clears throat> camp plants they dedicate they, they separate this not by photo uh, they separate the capturing of CO two not by space as is done in C four not by where it's done but but rather when it's done so in <clears throat> in uh, in camp plants, what you have is the mesophyll cells. Notice here you have two areas of mesophyll, and here you have in the bundle sheath cell. Here in the camp plants, again, we're separating. We're not. Do, we're trying to minimize Rubisco's actions, but what we're doing is we're collecting CO2 during the night by changing it from CO2 into this malic or malic acid, and we keep we build up this malic acid during the night. Um, and then during the day, the malic acid turns into, uh, turns into pyruvate and releases the CO2. So he, during the day, all that we have a high concentration of CO2. Of course, you close the stoma at, uh, during the day. So during the day, there's no gas exchange. So you have a high, high concentration of CO2, low concentration of oxygen. As the day wears on, you have a higher and higher concentration of oxygen because you're making oxygen here. And you're releasing, well, you're making it during uh, the light reactions. And you're using up the CO2 so that the, the high concentration of CO2 drops, the low concentration of oxygen goes up. Uh, but it doesn't matter because at night when you open those stoma, because of high to low, the oxygen, the high concentration, relatively high concentration of oxygen in the cell leaves the cell, leaves the leaf. And the relatively high concentration of CO2 brings it into the leaf, and then, of course, Pepsi captures the CO2 and always keeps the CO2 low in here, so you have a constant flow of CO2 from outside to inside. So that's the CAM explanation. Now let's look at, let's look at a summary. Okay, so in this summary, you can take a look at it and read it, um, but you have C3 photosynthesis, and a step-by-step -step this is typical C3 photosynthesis, what we've studied already. Photosynthesis occurs in a leaf. Rubisco enzyme is used to capture the CO2. The stoma is open during the day. Uh, produces three carbon compound called G3P. You use the Calvin cycle to incorporate the CO2 into sugar, organic materials. And it's typical, what we call typical photosynthesis. It works really well under cool, moist conditions, right? And normal light conditions. So... It works really well, well around us right now in Northeast Ohio. In, in, you know, in, at this latitude, C3 photosynthesis is preferred because it just is very efficient and happens uh, throughout the day and uh, all the way up until uh, the last bit of sunlight is used. But C4 photosynthesis is better. It's a better efficiency. It has better water, water efficiency. You have... <clears throat> You're able to control the loss of water. Remember, transpiration was, uh, while the stoma are open. It's not just oxygen and CO2 that are going in and out. It's also water. 
So you're losing a lot of water. So C4 photosynthesis is able to control that water loss better. And and uh, CO2 goes directly into Rubisco. So let's take a look. You do photosynthesis is faster in a desert. Uh, a desert's high heat, okay? Uh, stoma, they're open during the day. Uh, so you do have this in C4 photosynthesis. The, stoma, the stomata are open during the day. Remember, during the early mornings and late nights. And PEPS carboxylase enzyme is used because it's CO2 can, take, can be taken into the plant quickly and delivered to Rubisco quickly. All right, so carboxylase just takes it up real fast. Photosynthesis in the inner cell is special. Uh, all right, so we, we talked about the anatomy already. It's inside the, it's happening inside the, the bundle sheath cells instead of the mesophyll. And it photosynthesizes uh, faster under light temperature, high light and temperature and high temperatures because CO2 passes oxygen and re photorespiration and goes directly to rubisco photorespiration and goes to uh, rubisco directly. What that means is that instead of photorespiration happening in the mesophyll cells on the outside, as we just as we just outlined, it's happening. Uh, the rubisco is getting CO2 in the in the bundle sheath cells. So this is able to keep its its stoma stomata open. It's uh, yeah, the stomata open during the day because it's not incredibly hot. It's not incredibly dry, but it's able to. It's still hot. It's still sunny. So, but we're able to separate this uh, separate the processes by distance. So we're able to take that photo uh, that 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 Calvin cycle. We'll take Rubisco and put it in the bundle sheet cells away from the high oxygen concentration, so that you're then taking. Uh, the carbon dioxide, and as we've already described, increasing the carbon dioxide concentration for Rubisco and, de and decreasing the photorespiration that's going on. Now, camp plants are in places where really super dry, uh, you're, you're, and you have a hot, lot of light, and you have a lot of heat. Now these plants have, have evolved a, an ability to not to make sure to do it their darndest to make sure that they lose as little water as possible so they're named after the first family that found that was it was found in okay uh this is this is the kind of as the what the acronym cam stands for i know a couple of kids asked about it there it is the stomata are open at night and closed during the day again why does that help because in the desert when it's hot and the sun's up and it's really dry you're not losing water through the stomata the CO2 is converted to an acid during the, during the night. So at night when it opens up, you convert CO2 into, ma into malic acid, and then you store it. In the day, the acid is broken down back into CO2, and it's used through photosynthesis and to, make that, to make that sugar. It has better water efficiency, low water. Uh, <clears throat> uh, because remember, when, uh, when the stomata are closed during the day, you're not losing water. Um, and, and then we have, uh, you know, so there it is. So that's, you know, the, so the question, uh, the difference is, this is a good uh, chart for the difference between C4, CAM, and C3 photosynthesis. I think it's pretty straightforward. I hope you understand it. If you don't, uh, I hope you're asking questions today at our, uh, at our Saturday school. All right, have a good one.